Hello everyone, today we'll be doing some CSS and I'm going to show you how to attach a style sheet to your HTML document and then we'll apply a few uh, CSS uh, attributes and also add them into the, uh, the HTML itself and show you how that looks. So let's begin here. Uh, I've created, I've already created an index file and this is an index.html file and I've already created a style sheet also called styles.css and so this is what my HTML document looks like right now very bare bones and the style sheet and there's nothing in here I just labeled it this is my CSS document uh, this right here is a comment in CSS so get familiar with that you're going to want to use comments often to organize your style sheet let's go back over to the HTML so in here, I'm going to first. I'm going to attach that style sheet created. So, we're going to open up a the head here. We're going to just put a space in here, and we're going to link to the style sheet. So, I'll open up the bracket. I'll type in link, and then there's two things you want to do. You want to put in that href again, because now you're going to say where is this document? This document, and I know exactly where it is. So, I'm going to type that in. It's in my CSS folder I made, and I called it styles.css. So that's where that document is. Now the next thing you want to do is type in the word rel. Rel stands for relation. So what you want to say here is, here's where the document is, and this is why I'm pointing to this document. It's because it's a style sheet. So I want to label this as a style sheet. And the last part you want to write is what type it is, and this is text and CSS and then I can close my tag there there's no end tag for this link it's, you don't put a uh, bracket slash link this isn't a traditional tag okay so that's it so you've got link where it is what type of file it is what relation does it have to this document it's a style sheet and what type it is now the type here um, I believe you don't need this anymore starting now with HTML5 for those of you who are already using HTML5, you don't need to call the type. Uh, but for now, I'm going to leave it because you know it's it's very common. Everyone still uses it, or a lot of people still use it. So that's our style sheet. Um, now I'm going to go into the body here, and I'm going to put in a few elements with some IDs, maybe some classes, and then I'm going to use the style sheet and add those IDs, add those classes, and show you how they work together. So let me save this document and let me just type in now a div here and this div I'm gonna give it an ID and I'm gonna call this header for now and inside this div I'll just write in header again and let me save that now you can see this is an ID because I labeled it an ID I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna put another one below it and this time I'm gonna change it to a class and I'm gonna leave it header so we can have an ID we can have a class they can have the same name because they're different um, one thing to know is that headers, or IDs, I'm sorry, uh, they can only be used once per page. Now, you can have multiple IDs, but you can't have the same name. I, same name. So I can't have header ID somewhere else on my page. It won't validate with W3Schools. It will still work in some browsers, but it won't validate. Classes, however, you can have as many classes as you want. I can duplicate this div multiple times, and there's no problem there. Let's flip over to our style sheet. And so we have an ID and a class here. An ID starts always with a pound sign followed by the name that we labeled that ID. So I'm going to write in header. A class starts with a period, and I use the same class name, so I'll write in header again. Um, after you write that name, you want to open a bracket and close a bracket. And then inside that bracket is where your CSS will go. So I'm just going to hit enter here. And I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, class header. There we go. And let me save that. Uh, now nothing's going to be changed yet because we haven't said what colors or fonts or things we want to do with those elements. So let me just type in now uh, font. Uh, if you type in font, you can choose obviously the font you want to use. And let me just do it this way for you, you can see what I'm talking about. I'll put in the font size, uh, and I'll just do six, 18 pixels, put in a color, and then we'll go with a blue again. 
And that's it for now. So if I go over to the source code, uh, you can't see anything yet. Let me flip over to the browser so you can preview this. You can see this font now is blue. Its font size is 18. And for some reason, the font actually didn't work. Um, the element font that I just called in my style did not work. Um, I found that sometimes it doesn't work in certain browsers. I'm not sure what the case is. Sometimes there's a little funky error involved. So what I like to write is font family and now it works. And you can see it worked fine. The reason it didn't work I think is because I'm using Firefox 5 which is the latest, latest Firefox browser. Now other Firefoxes like 3 and, and, and 4 they will support just font. But to be safe if I were you I would stay with font family whenever you're going to choose the font you want to use. So now our class Oh, and notice our class, our second header stayed exactly the same. They have the same name, but one's an ID, one's a class. Make sure you understand those two things. So for our class here, we'll just write, uh, you know, I can to speed up time. I like to copy my CSS and repaste it, and then I can just change things. Maybe I want to change this to a size 14, and maybe I want this to be black, so I'll just do uh, the black color there, and I'll refresh, and it's font you know it's smaller than this one so we know it's 14 and we know it's black so that's your header that's a class what else are we going to do in this document we're going to declare a few things maybe there's a background image on, on your website and you want some kind of color associated with it or a graphic so to do that we're going to write in body and there's no pound there's no period this is simply just body and that's going to control the body tag so now that we have this body tag Again, I'll open my bracket. I hit return a few times. I'll close my bracket. Inside the body tag is where I'll put in things like the background. Uh, I also like to, you know, to save some some more space, even to make the page load faster. You notice here I put font family. Put font family. They both have the same font. There's no point in writing that font over and over and over. You're just cluttering up your style sheet. So what you want to do is let's delete these fonts. And let's go back to the browser. You can see the fonts are gone. And now on the body tag, I'm going to add that font family. And I'm going to go back to my browser, refresh, and they're back. So what this is doing, it's going to say anything inside the body tag, give it this font. And same thing goes with fonts, colors, anything I put in here. So if I do font size is 16 pixels, you would assume it would be everything would be 16 pixels, correct? nothing changed. Reason four, cascading style sheets. Anything below will override anything above. So because I put 18 here, it's going to override that 16. Now if I remove this 18 and go back to the browser and refresh, it shrinks it down to size 16, which is what I chose in my body. So anything below will override. So those are IDs, that's a class, and that's a body tag. Let's go over quickly the headings. Uh, so let me just add a new break here. Uh, heading tags. What do they look like? Let's go back to HTML. So in here, we'll just type in H1, which is your largest heading. Heading 1. And to save time, again, I will be copying and pasting a lot. Heading 2, 3, and 4. They don't say that yet, but I will change them. 2, 3, 4. And go back over here, four, three, two. Um, of course, I have to change all these numbers now. I'm just going to use numbers. It's faster. And let me change this to keep consistency. Then let's flip over the browser and take a look. There you have adding one, two, three, and four. They're not styled. These are default styling. But notice they have the font Arial that I had set in my body tag originally. So why did that? Why did that font not work? You're wondering. The headings have. Uh, default sizes to them and they won't be overrided until you declare them so let's do that to do that h1 very simple you just type in what the heading tag was and you add in your font size if you want uh, let's go with 24 pixels and i'm going to just add a color and just use a red let's go back to the browser refresh it's now red size 24. Um, again copy and paste saves you time down the line Change these to two, 
3 and 4. Notice none of these have any characters in front of them. It's just h1 tag is an h1 in the CSS. Same thing with the body. Same thing with HTML. Guess what? It's the same thing with list items. We'll add a ul tag. And inside that, we'll have our, under our list item. List item. And we'll copy that a few times. Go back here. Refresh. Whoa, what happened here? I added the headings 2, 3, and 4. And they all have the exact same fonts. So let's change that to 21, or font sizes. Change that to 18, and change this to 14. Refresh, and you can see they're now scaling down. Notice the list item. It is Arial, because we chose a font. But again, UL tags, like headings, they do their own thing when it comes to sizes. So let's go in here, and we'll add in the UL, LI. And I'll put in a font size, and I'll just choose 14. Actually, let's choose 12. So this is the unordered list. Um, notice I put in ULLI, and the reason for that is because I'm saying find the UL, and then find an LI inside that UL, and apply the font size 12. So find UL, find LI, find the font size 12. That's what that is saying right there. If I was to delete these, this LI, it will say find the UL and add the font size 12. And it still works. Why? Because now it's finding anything inside a UL at font size 12. By putting UL LI, you're being more specific. Uh, and this comes in handy because say you have multiple list items. For example, you have a navigation up top that you're using a list item for. And then somewhere in the body, you just have a regular, regular list. Maybe you don't want those things to look exactly the same. Maybe you want different font sizes. So you'll need to separate them by being more specific. Now, Okay, you have a list item here, and if I duplicate this and add another list item, how do I make this list item different from this list item? That's where the IDs and classes come in handy. So, inside this UL, we'll add an ID called list2. And inside this UL, we'll add an ID called list1. So we have two different IDs, two different ULs. We'll go back in here. The UL starts with an ID, so it's UL put in the pound sign, and put in list1. So here we're saying find the UL with an ID, list1, and then find the LI inside that UL that has that ID, list1, and add the font size 12. Now I'm going to just duplicate this, paste it, and I'm going to change this 1 to a 2, and the same thing, we're going to find the UL with the ID, list2, and the LI, and this font size will make a size 10. And to also notice the color change, uh, we want to just do uh, red here, you can write, this is red in, in HTML, but you could just write the word red, and that should work, and it does. Uh, and you can see here, now we've got two list items. The only difference is the ID. In the code, they look identical except the ID name. And that's how you get uh, two different list items looking like that. So that's some very basic CSS. We've covered your basic font headings, a couple list items, what an ID, a class is, how to use the body tag. The only thing I didn't mention was the paragraph tag, which again, it's the same thing as your headings. You just put in a P tag, or the P for the P tag, and then you add in your, your CSS, whatever you want to do with those P tags. Maybe you want these to be a different color, a, a color green. And oh, let me put in my colon there. Let me now go into the HTML and put in a paragraph. Uh, copy goes in here. Go back to the browser, refresh, scroll down a little bit. You can see here is that uh, green color that I've used for the paragraph tag. And it's using the font 16 in the body because I didn't declare one in my paragraph. So that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments, and uh, hopefully this is useful and you'll be able to use it throughout your day uh, at work.